Oh, why, yes, of course. Tell him no speak English. Will you be quiet? I will take no college stuff, and that's final. Oh, Mr. Shane says he'll be delighted to take the case. The Hastings Manufacturing Company and the Kayside Corporation present Michael Shane, Private Detective, starring Wally Mayer and Kathy Lewis. <laughs> A detective without a murder case is like flapjacks without syrup. Yet, that is just the predicament of our friend Michael Shane. In fact, things are so dull that we find Michael and his blonde assistant, Phyllis Knight, not at the office, not at police headquarters, not at the morgue, but squirming uncomfortably in the seat of higher learning. In other words, the office of the president of Huxley College. Professor Brill is explaining the situation to our friends. As I say, Mr. Shane, I decided to ask for your help because Phyllis Knight graduated from Huxley and is now, as I understand it, your uh, amanuensis. My... Oh, no, Professor. She's just my secretary. Amanuensis means secretary, my pet. Oh, excuse me. Uh, yes, you're not quite so. You see, Mr. Shane, we don't want to take our problem to the town police. Uh, unfavorable publicity, you know. But something must be done about it immediately. It's affecting the morale of our girls. The girls? I thought this place was co-educational. It is, Mr. Shane. But our feminine students seem to be more affected by it. Oh, a bad rash of Frank Sinatra? Oh, no, no. That is no more than usual. <laughs> You'll understand after talking with the uh, victims. I have two of them waiting now in the outer office. Uh, just a moment, please. <clears throat> oh, Miss Brown, uh, you step in here. Yes, Professor. Uh, very good, yes. Step right in here, Miss Brown. <laughs> This is Mr. Shane, Miss Brown. Oh, how do you do? Hello. And Miss Knight, and Mr. Shane's associate and one of our former alumni. Oh, how do you do, Miss Brown? I should explain, Miss Brown, that Mr. Shane is a private investigator whom we have employed to solve the uh, embarrassments which have been occurring here recently. Oh. Now, if you'll just uh, repeat your story. Uh, well, if, if you say so, Professor Brill... Uh, it's a little embarrassing. Oh, well, go right ahead, Miss Brown. Oh, well, it, it happened last Monday night. I was in my room in the sorority getting ready for bed. And I was getting into bed when I heard a sound like somebody giggling. Mm. And uh, a neko, maybe? Oh, no, sir. More like a mad laugh. It came from the window. It was open, but there was a scream. Somebody was trying to pry it off. And then? <laughs> I screamed. That's the usual procedure, I believe. Uh, go on, Miss Brown. Well, he ran away. That's all. Do I understand, Professor Brill, that you brought us all the way down here just because of some peeping Tom? No, 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 no. You don't appreciate the situation, Mr. Shane. In the past week, I've had at least a dozen complaints similar to Miss Brown's. Oh, my. It's gotten so our girls never know when they're safe. Well, I don't think that's peculiar to Huxley College, Professor. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> oh, yes, I see. Well, uh, Mr. Shane, I think you should hear the newest turn of events. Uh, Miss Brown, will you ask uh, Quincy Baldwin to step in here? It's all right if I leave, Professor? Oh, yes, of course, and thank you very much. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Shane. Miss Knight. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Until last night, Mr. Shane, none of the boys had been involved. But now, uh, well, I'll let Quincy tell you about it. Oh, well, come right in, Quincy. Oh, thanks, sir. Hmm, tall, blonde, and rugged. Uh, Mr. Shane, this is Quincy Baldwin, another of our students. Our most uh, brilliant student, I might say. Oh, well, I'm glad to meet you. How do you do, sir? And Miss Knight. Charmed, Miss Knight. Thank you. Quincy, Mr. Shane would like you to tell him your unfortunate experience of last night. Oh. Well, Mr. Shane, about 10 o'clock last night, I was coming home from a lecture... And about a block from my fraternity, a masked man jumped out from behind a hedge and... and yes? Well, he conked me on the head. I see. Just a friendly gesture or some sort of college hazy? Hardly, sir. The man had a gun. Oh. Um, any way for you to recognize him again? Oh, no, sir. He got away. I should add, Mr. Shane, that this individual has been sending anonymous notes to my office. He boasts of his activities and promises more serious things to come. Now, believe me, sir, if it doesn't stop soon, a mass hysteria will break out among the student body. I hope you catch him, sir. 
I'm willing to do anything I can to help. Yes, that's an idea, Quincy. Perhaps you should go along with Mr. Sheen. You can acquaint him with the campus and all our activities. Be glad to, sir. Yes. Well, uh, for this afternoon, I'd like to work alone. If this peeping Tom performs only at night, well, uh, suppose, Quincy, you meet us, say, about uh, 9 or 9.30. Well, um... Could you make it ten, sir? Mm -hmm. I have to attend a lecture tonight, and it's on the kinetic principles and thermal diffusion. Really? I must try that sometime. Uh, mm, yes, yes. Okay, okay, make it ten o'clock. Uh, where will we meet? Well, at the clock tower. Uh, meanwhile, maybe this afternoon, Quincy can show me around. Huh? You know, bring me up to date on things. Oh, I'm sorry, sugar. I'll want you. We've got to check those uh, anonymous notes. You said you wanted to work alone. I've changed my mind. If you know what I mean. Well, that uh, tower clock is five minutes slow, according to my watch. Mm -hmm. Our good-looking friend should be here now. Oh, good-looking bookend, if you ask me. Oh, yeah. And since when do you go for blonde guys with curly hair? Well, you look who's talking. You spent plenty of time wandering around the girls' gym this afternoon. Research, honey, research. <laughs> and it looks to me like this particular seat of learning has got quite a spread, baby. You know what I mean? I get it. Hey, here comes our blonde menace right now. Oh, hello there. Hello. Oh, sorry to be late. The lecture was wonderful. I wish you could have heard the professor on the separation of the isotopes. Oh, no. Have they separated again? Oh, yes, 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 all over town. Mrs. Isotope couldn't stand his drinking. Oh, well, I know it was causing talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, it was a good lecture. <laughs> you know, with all your enthusiasm, Quincy, I suspect there's a cute redhead at the desk in front of you. Oh, no, 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 the feminine element doesn't fit into my program. Oh, really? Look, I, I may seem a little over-enthusiastic, but, you see, my father used to teach here at Huxley, psychology. So erudition is probably bred into the corpuscles, you might say. Well, guys have been shot for saying less. Well, <clears throat> suppose we get started, huh? The uh, sorority houses are on Elm Street, aren't they? Yes, the street here to our right. Oh, uh, I'm blamed if I know where we start. Just ambling down sorority row, waiting for some gal to yelp isn't my idea of an investigation. Have you checked on the notes this individual's been writing? Yeah. Yeah, I did that this afternoon. The guy printed them with a pen... No dice. You know, this place hasn't changed a bit. Street's quiet as a grave at 10 o'clock. Um, may I make a suggestion, Mr. Shane? Yeah, shoot. Well, it might look better if you and Miss Knight were alone for a while. If you were to get in your car and park under a tree and... Well, you follow my train of thought. <laughs> well, I think I caught the uh, caboose, at least. In basic English, you mean... Smooching. <laughs> you know, you're improving, Quincy. That's the first sane idea we've had. Please. Oh, Mr. Shane. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, Mr. Shane. Isn't that Professor Brill? Yes, and running, too. Uh, oh, Mr. Shane, I... Oh, I, I, I thought I might miss you. Something terrible has happened. Just terrible. Yeah, what? At the sorority. One of the girls uh, has been murdered. <laughs> Oh, what a dreadful, dreadful thing to happen. Mm-hmm. Dead about a half an hour. And a very neat job of strangling. What? What's that wand around her throat, Michael? Well, it looks like... Yeah, yeah, it is. The laces from a football. A football? Who found her? I did. You're one of the students living here? Yes. Jean Winters. I came to ask Agnes for my sewing kit. I forgot it when I moved out. You see, we lived together and... I couldn't stand it any longer. Oh? What was wrong? I'll tell you, Mr. Shane. As house mother of this sorority, I owe a duty to my other girls. I made Jean move to another room before she and Agnes drove the rest of us insane. Please, Mrs. Fuller. They were fighting always. Yesterday I caught them in here pulling hair and smashing things. Oh, boy trouble out there. I told Agnes I went out with Gil only once. Is that why Agnes slammed the door in Gil's face this afternoon? I saw that myself. Hey, wait, hold it. Who's uh, Gil? Gil Packard, Mr. Shane. He's our star halfback and my roommate. He was Agnes's boyfriend. Tight little corporation, this. Mrs. Fuller... During the past hour, did anybody hear any unusual sounds from this room? No, it's been very peaceful since yesterday. Oh, oh. 
then the killer probably was somebody Agnes knew. That uh, window over there, any way of reaching it from the outside? Well, there's a little porch. I suppose somebody could climb up it. But if you ask me, Mr. Shane, I think you won't have to look outside this room for the murderer. If you're talking about me, Mrs. Fuller, I'll lend you to my room. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you ladies don't mind, I'll run this circus. Michael, listen. Yeah. Outside that window. I'll see if I can get a look at him. Stop where you are. Who is it, Michael? Oh, darn it. He got away. I just saw his back. But... Mr. Shane, aren't you going after him? No, no, it's useless. He's got too much of a head start. Anyway, I got a hunch he's not the man we want. Dollars to donuts, it was the peeping Tom. Eh, maybe, maybe. Well, children, I think that's all here for the while. Oh, say, Quincy, hmm? have you any idea where I might find Gil Packard at the moment? Well, surely. He has to be in his room by 9 o'clock every night. He's in training. Okay, then let's take off. <laughs> Is right down the hall here. Fine. I don't know your purpose, Mr. Shane, but I can tell you Gil has nothing to do with this affair. I didn't say he had, Quincy. I'd just like to get a list of Agnes's possible enemies. I can't rely too much on Miss Jean Winters. You might also check on the spat between Gil and Agnes. Uh, this is our room. Oh. Oh, hello, Quincy. Gil, this is Mr. Shane and Miss Knight. They want to see you about uh, something. Just a social call, Mr. Packard. Huh? Oh, say... You got quite a scratch on your cheek there. It's bleeding. Oh, uh, yeah. I was just changing the bandage. I, I got it in a scrimmage. Oh, uh, won't you have a chair, Miss? Knight. Thank you. By the way, Mr. Packard, wasn't it rather risky to break training tonight? How did you... Oh, so Agnes blabbed again, did she? Told her what would happen if the coach found out. Thinks it's so funny to make a guy jump through hoops. No. No, it wasn't Agnes, Mr. Packard. I happen to recognize the plaid coat you're wearing. I saw the back of it when you ran away from the sorority house a few minutes ago. That's how you got the scratch, isn't it? Uh, well, I, I fell off the porch. Uh, somebody yelled at me, and I, I got scared and ran. I wanted to talk to Aggie, and... Well, I wasn't supposed to be out after 9 o'clock. I figured nobody would see me at her window. I'm afraid it's all my fault, Mr. Shane. I told Gil to go over there tonight and have it out with Agnes once and for all. Oh, that trouble over Gene Winters? No, over another guy, Red Burroughs. Aggie knows I'm crazy about her, and yet I'm... Say, what's all this pumping about anyway? Agnes has been murdered, Mr. Packard. Mur... What? She's dead? That's right. Oh, no. Well, it, it doesn't seem possible. But this is afternoon, Aggie, and I... Oh, my... Mike, look. Under that bookcase. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Packard, did you go to see Agnes at any time earlier this evening? No. Can you prove it? I was with him at the lecture, Mr. Shane. Yes, and we came back here and Quince left. I sneaked out later. I see. Uh, by the way, is that your football under the bookcase there? Huh? Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. It's unlaced. Where are the strings? Well, I don't know. It was laced this afternoon. Oh. Michael, where are you going? It's a telephone. I think the police can take over from here. What? What do you mean? Well, for your information, Mr. Packard, Agnes Carter was strangled with a pair of football laces. Or didn't you know? <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Shane. We'd like to see Professor Brill. Well, I think he's busy right now. He telephoned for us to come right over. Oh, then I'll tell him you're here. Uh, just a moment, please. All right. You know, Michael, I don't like this case. There's something fishy about it somewhere. Yeah. Fishy is an aquarium. It's too blame simple. Then you don't think Gil Packard did it? No. Oh, we had to arrest him. Circumstances were too strong. But, uh... You know who our man is. Who? Handsome face. That Quincy bird. What? Quiet. You can go right in. Oh, oh, thanks. Come on, baby. Ah, uh, uh, Mr. Shane. Mr. Knight, I'm glad you could come. 
Quincy here's been pestering me for one solid half hour. Yes, Mr. Shane, you've got to clear Gil. He didn't do it. You know who did? Well, no, but I'm sure Gil is innocent. Why, I've roomed with him for two terms now, the most popular boy on the campus. He's a swell fella. He wouldn't do such a thing. And besides, I was with him most of the evening. But he did break training and wanted to lie about it. Oh, he was just scared. Oh, my, my, my. The whole thing is most regrettable, most regrettable. I anticipate a very unfavorable reaction among our regions and alumni. Well, Quincy, I don't see that there's much that can be done. Oh, Gil will be given a fair trial. Mr. Shane, uh... almost anybody could have killed Agnes. She had plenty of enemies. The girls didn't like her. The boys got two times. She had a Messalina complex. Is that bad? Psychological double talk, Michael. It means a lady wolf. Agnes went for one boy after another. The minute she knew he was in love with her, she'd throw him over to show her power. Gil was just another one. Any of those boys might kill her, or one of the girls, Jean Winters, for instance. Anybody might. Uh, pardon me. Uh, Professor Brill, this special delivery letter just came. Oh, yes, yes, thank you, thank you. Oh, you need to wait. Uh, yes, Professor Brill. Yes. Oh, excuse me while I see what this is. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Well, if uh, it's as you say, Quincy, everybody on the campus is in this. I, uh, I think I'll let the local police in. Uh, oh, my. Oh, this is frightful. Now, what's wrong? Uh, Mr. Shin, read this letter. Professor Brill, I told you you couldn't stop me, even from murder. Nobody can outwit me, least of all that wool brain detective you've hired. <clears throat> You'll be hearing from me again. Hmm. That's all. It's unsigned. Well... Now you'll believe me, Mr. Shane. Gill is innocent. Maybe not. Gill could have mailed this letter before we arrested him to make it look like the work of your peeping Tom. Well, what do you propose to do now, Mr. Shane? Uh, go home, Professor. What? Yep. Yeah, I don't feel like playing blind man's buff any longer. Eh? The local police can take over. But, Mr. Shane... I'm sorry. I should remind you, Mr. Shane, your fee was dependent upon catching this uh, peeping Tom, who, who is now a murderer. That's okay, Professor. At least I can say I've been through a college. You coming, Phil? Hmm? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, uh, oh, by the way, Professor. Uh, yes. Could you tell me who was the most popular girl on the campus? Uh, let me see. Oh, Claire Fisher won the last popularity contest. Uh, why? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Goodbye, gentlemen. <laughs> stopping for? Did you leave something back at the hotel? Uh-uh. Pardon me, have you seen the new Cary Grant movie? No. Well, you're going to. In fact, you're going to see it three times today. Are you kidding? I thought we were headed for the city. That's what I want everybody to think. Let's yeah. go. Come on, baby. Thank you. The uh, theater's right across the street. Until nine o'clock tonight, it's you and me in the dark and cozy. <laughs> Pretty good, hmm? Pretty good. With Cary Grant. Oh, look, my dear Mr. Shane, do we have to keep walking around the same block all night? Mike, let's stop a minute. I tell you, it's going to happen. I feel it in my bones. Oh, I still say nobody's going to pull two murders two nights running. Besides, I just can't see how you figure a nice boy like that Quincy could yeah, possibly... you wait, sugar, you wait. If I guessed right, and I think I have, it's going to happen right across the street in that same sorority house. I see. You and the gent sat down over a cup of tea and sided it all. Hey, isn't that Quincy coming along the sidewalk? Mm-hmm. And Miss Jean Winters. They're carrying tennis rackets. Must have had a night nice game. Hello, Quincy. Oh. Oh, Mr. Shane, I thought you'd left. Well, uh, we were delayed. Just taking a last stroll around the place. Well, how are you tonight, Miss Winters? All right, thank you. Have a good game? Oh, all right. I don't like playing at night. She says she can't see the ball under the lights. I have enough trouble hitting it in the daylight. <laughs> I know what you mean. I have the same trouble. Oh? Do you play, Miss Knight? Oh, I used to, a little. I don't get a chance very often now. <laughs> Come on, Prince, let's go. Uh, just a minute, Jean. Is there anything I can do, Mr. Shane? No. No, thanks. We're just uh, taking a last look at the campus. Listen, Quincy, if you're going to restring these rackets... All right, all right. Well, um, goodbye, Mr. Shane. Miss Knight. Goodbye. Good night. Good night. All right, honey. This is it. 
What? Michael, are, are you in a trance, staring at the stars like that? Come on, baby. we got to get going. What? What's the matter? I think I know how Miss Claire Fisher is going to be killed if we don't get there first. <laughs> That's Claire's room, the lighted window, third to the right. On the ground floor? Yeah. May I ask, Mr. Shane, how you knew which was her room? Or shouldn't I mention it? More research, honey. Hmm. I checked it before we left this afternoon. Now keep in the shadow of these bushes. We don't want anybody to spot us. How do you know Claire is going to be the one to be killed? Just a hunch, honey. Figuring it from his angle. Look. Look, our light just went out. Okay. Now look. We've got to get across that stretch of lawn without being seen. Mm -hmm. If we muff this, it may be the end of clear. You say when. All right. Now, aim for that big bush under the first window. Yeah. Then work along the building to her window. You all set? Yes. Okay, let's go. We made it. All right, stick up. Huh? It's a cop. I got you covered. No funny. Shh, quiet. Ah, it's almost two peeping towns. Shh, quiet. Eh? Listen, officer, please. You've got us wrong. I'm the detective, Michael Shane. Oh, yeah? You left town this afternoon. But wait a minute. You're leaving for the station right now. Michael, somebody's at Claire's window. Yes, come on. We've got to get in there. Oh, no, you do. Oh, but, officer, look. Look, a girl's going to be killed. Oh, yeah? Ain't that interesting? Oh. Okay, you ask for it. Oh. <laughs> come on, Phil, quick. Yeah. in the window. Hey, you! Come back! Now, you get that cop and come a-running. I'm going in this window. Oh, watch out, darling, please. All right, Quincy. Up with the hands. It's dark in here, Mr. Shane. You can't see me. But she'll feel me. Ow! Why, you... Oh, you... Oh, you don't. You haven't got me yet, Mr. Shane. Oh, here. That's what you... Here. Here's a sample of my Sunday punch. All right, come on, open the door. Michael. Michael, are you all right? Yeah, yeah. I'll let you in. Wait a minute. Hey, what's going on here? Come on, turn on the door. Yes, yeah. Here we are, officer. Oh, oh. Oh, Michael, oh. you're hurt. Oh, brother. Did he give me a sweetie's massage? And Claire. Oh, look. Oh, saints. You wasn't kidding me. Another murder. No, not quite. I can feel her heartbeat. Strangled. With with what? Tennis strings, baby. Tennis strings. Uh, uh, uh. Well, officer, you'd better clamp the bracelets on Mr. Quincy Baldwin. Huxley's most brilliant student is coming, too. Yeah. Yeah, thanks to you, Mr. Shane. I am the most brilliant student. The rest are sheep, fools. Seems to me you have a rather extreme way of proving the point. The girls didn't like me. I was too brilliant. The boys were jealous of my brains, even Gil. <laughs> Beeping Tom. They reacted just as I wanted them to. I started it just as a game to watch the sheep react. An experiment in psychology. Experiment in murder, you mean? Ah, it was easy. And Gil was such a fish. I helped you, Mr. Shane. I even risked my neck. There was the thrill of danger. But you didn't catch me, Mr. Shane. You just blundered onto it, you stupid man. Well, hardly, Quincy. You see, you made a couple of slips. You were the only boy that the peeping Tom picked on. And then you were so helpful to us. You didn't come directly to meet us at the clock tower. You took a few minutes out to kill Agnes. Michael, how did you know you'd try to kill Claire tonight? His ego. You remember when I asked Professor Brill who was the most popular girl? Yes. Well, that was it. Gil, the most popular boy. Claire, the most popular girl. <laughs> you couldn't resist that, Quincy. <laughs> I still say you're stupid. Yeah? Well, it could be. But you'll be wearing the dunce cap, Quincy, when you sit in the gas chamber. Oh, oh what's that, honey? Another bill? No, my duck. 
Just a little check from Huxley College. It's our fee, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, by the way, did you graduate from any other college? <laughs> of course not. Are you sure? Yes. Oh, well, that's good. Why? Well, colleges give me an inferiority complex. That stuff about thermal diffusion and kinetic, what do you call them? <laughs> ah, that's no place for a dick. Oh, well, it's all right, Michael. I like you just the way you are. Oh, you do, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Besides, you're intelligent, and that's what counts in the long run. You wouldn't change me, hmm? Well, uh... Well, what? Well, you might take your feet off the desk. Huh? Oh, <laughs> Why, certainly, Miss Isotope. Why, thank you, Mr. Isotope. <laughs> Michael Shane, Private Detective, stars Wally Mayer and Kathy Lewis. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.